morning, everybody. I want to welcome you all to the services today. That was a good southern word, y'all. I want to welcome everyone to the services today. Especially want to welcome any uh, visitors we may have. Just ask if you could fill out the tab on the side of the bulletin. Drop it in offering plate when it comes around. And if you are a first-time guest, we'd like to welcome you with a special gift bag we've arranged. But we need you to raise your hand up really high at this time. One of these ladies will get that to you. For his announcements this morning, I have quite a bit, so bear with me and listen up because you probably could help with a lot of this stuff. Uh, I want a Christmas store. We need to start getting uh, gifts in here for that, if you can help with that in any way. Also, uh, college care packages. We need items for that also. If you can help with that, uh, I think Sandy Hodges is taking the lead on that stuff. You can either see her at the co-op or you can call her or call the church office up here. Also, we need help for the bus ministry. For Awanas on Wednesday night, we need drivers for pickup and drop-off. The pickup times is usually around 4.30 to 5.15. Drop-offs, of course, from 7 to 7.45, somewhere around there. Uh, also, we need, could use some drivers to fill in for our regular drivers if somebody is not here. There is no CDL required, so you don't have to worry about that. And if you can help, uh, you can call Josh Smithy at 371-2301 or see him after church. He's there in his green shirt. And also, now we'll get down to the serious stuff here. Thanksgiving dinner and offering, my favorite time of the year, will be next Sunday, of course, November 25th, November 24th. And we still need a few more people to volunteer to cook turkeys or hams for our Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, and if you'd like to be willing to cook one of those, please see Katie after church, and she'll be by the sound booth back there. So definitely somebody get back there and volunteer to cook some turkeys and ham. It's my two favorite things. Uh, we will have the dinner. It'll be right after morning services. Please bring a side dish and a dessert if you can. And there's usually plenty here, but... And the meat, of course, will be furnished with the church. Now we want to talk about Journey to Bethlehem. Uh, that's coming up here December 7th and 8th. We do have some of these little flyers out back on the visitor center. And they're also back by the church office. And we'd like for you to pick some of those up, passing out throughout the town or wherever town you live in. And uh, let's see, we will have another work day. This Saturday at 9 o'clock up here on the hill, if you could help with that. And also, if you want to be in the Salem Christmas Parade uh, in costume with the Christmas drama, uh, be sure to see Greg Workman. He's back here. Where are you, Greg? Okay. Greg's right back there. See Greg Workman about that. And also, if you can help work on that float, please see Greg. So we that's December 7th, 8th, going to be right here before we know it, so we got a lot to do. Also, uh, next Sunday is Baby Dedication Day, and all who have babies that want to have, have them dedicated, please call the church office and let them know. And also, an, another note on Journey to Bethlehem, I missed it there. If you can help with food items, there are several food items that we need for that. They are in the uh, bulletin, the items we need. And you can see Amy Smithy, she's right next to Josh Smithy, so you can see her after church and help with that. <laughs> Name what? <laughs> They're needy today, a needy family there. So, I got one card I'd like to read. It says, Sometime God answers our prayers through special people like you. Thank you so much for the food, flowers, calls, and expressions of love. There's nothing like a church family. And that's from the family of Miss Evelyn Willett. That's all I have today. I think uh, Sister Teresa here has got something she wants to say. Good morning. In the month of November, we have our Thanksgiving offering for um, the ABC homes. And traditionally observed by the Arkansas Baptist churches since 1908. The, this Thanksgiving offering provides hope and a love to hurting children and families has been the goal for the ABC homes. Thanks to the many churches and individual donors that gener generously give, we can reach out to hurting children and families and offer them Christ-like hope and to seek and direct them to the wonderful hope of our Lord. And there's four locations in Arkansas. In Harrison, there's the Boys Ranch. In Monticello, the Baptist Children's Homes. In Little Rock, 
the Promise House Maternity Care, and in Fayetteville, Jonesboro, and Little Rock is the Emergency Receiving Homes. Um, as Christians, we purposely live from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Um, so this year, we sponsored a 5K race to re take steps to raise funds for our children. And um, pulling from James 127 was the reason of doing this pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. So in taking that scripture, uh, we took steps in uh, sponsoring a race to raise funds that we could send the funds to these places that they would be visited and uh, be taken care of. And I just want to take the moment to thank everyone that helped. Um, this year was a, a small um, group, but uh, we had fun supporting a great cause with great people. And we'll see you next year at the starting line. Thank you. I did uh, think of something too. I think I brought this up last week, but if you are participating in the Samaritan's Purse, uh, chew boxes, I believe they start pickup on them tomorrow, and that's down at Emmanuel Baptist. You'll have to call down there and get the times for drop-off. So that's all I have today. I have any birthdays this past week? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. see that that's terrible Holy have any uh anniversaries this past week there we go happy anniversary to you happy anniversary to you happy anniversary god bless you happy anniversary our service father we do thank you for this beautiful day you blessed us with and we thank you for another day of life upon this earth to be able to share your word with others father and we also pray that you'll just be at the rest of this service you'll just bless our choir and brother james you'll bless brother toms he brings a message from your word here today we pray also for the ones that may be traveling today there's so many amongst us that are and uh, we and we also pray, Father, that you'll be at the ones that's uh, ill. We know there's many that's ill throughout our church. We just pray that you'll just be with them and restore their health. And we just, just pray that you'll just guide and lead and direct us and be with us always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning again. We're going to sing songs of thanksgiving this morning. Psalm 107 says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. So, song, um, let's stand. If you don't care, let's stand. Sing. Count your blessings this morning.
let's glorify him with this song right here. It's just a simple song. We will glorify the King of Kings. Here we go. to many of us in here, anything that we sing to, to raise the name of Jesus ought to mean so much to us. But we're going to sing one more song, and stand with me this morning one more time. We're going to give thanks to the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Give thanks with a grateful heart is what we need to do this morning. So go ahead and begin that this morning, and we'll start. <laughs>
pray. I'd like to uh, say something this morning. When Brother Don asked me to pray today, uh, I went to Sunday school class. I just asked the Lord, okay, what, what do you mean to say? And <clears throat> our church is going through some difficult times. A lot of people out there are suffering or family suffering or what have you. But it's amazing when you think of the songs that we sang, start off with, we count our blessings. We all have them. And as we went on with the song, they fit in. And <clears throat> I was thinking, what if I this morning was in the Philippines? So we all have a lot to be thankful for. And it benefits us very little if we don't share it. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, help us to be mindful of our many blessings in our times of pain and sorrow. Help us to realize that each thing that comes along, that it strengthens us to be a better person, to be a better Christian, to be a better follower and hopefully to be a better disciple. We come to you this morning, dear Lord, and we praise you for your blessings. We praise you for your son. For each day we wake up, we're a day closer to salvation. We pray, Lord, that you take these blessings and you use them in a way that will enhance, enhance your kingdom. In Jesus' name and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. I hope this song this morning 
will bless you. Through it all, we need to learn to trust in Jesus in this life, and this song says it very well. So I hope it uh, touches you this morning. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There's been time I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation. Let my trials only come to make me strong. I've been a lot of places. I've seen so many faces. There's been times I felt so alone. But in that lonely hour, in that precious lonely hour, Jesus let me know. for helping us through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for the opportunity to be with you today and to, to share and, and uh, the uh, things that God's given. Uh, sometimes you really, as a as a preacher or pastor or whatever, sometimes you really wonder if this is what you're supposed to be talking about. Boy, that happens lots of times. And Rob, when I got here this morning, you were talking a little bit about problems that folks face. Some of the songs that we've just sung talk about the problems we face in life. This last song that Brother James just did, Through It All, brings me to this point and lets me think about this. Why is it all happening to me? Okay. Should be up there someplace there. Why is it all happening to me? How many times have any of you ever asked that question, why is it all happening to me? If you haven't asked it before, you'll ask it before this is over with, okay? You really will. Hey, life's difficult. Life's not always the bunch of roses. Sometimes it's a handful of thorns. Do you know that? It really is. And we face all these things and the difficulties come, the troubles come, the trials come. And we do, we sit back. And I've said it, and probably you've said it more than once. Why is this happening to me? The tough things in life. Well, Paul wrote this, and it is in 2 Corinthians. Uh, Corinthians, I believe you're going to find this in the 12th chapter, verses 8 
through 12. And I'm going to ask you if you would stand with me. We're going to read these passages. And uh, then we're going to pray, okay? It says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Father, may your word speak to us. May it not be anything that I would have to say, but what you would say. Father, I pray that those folks that are here today are struggling, struggling with the problems and the perplexities of life, the insults that life brings upon us, that, God, we might find today encouragement in your word and in your sweet presence in our lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Well, I look at it like this, and and I've said it, and I'm going to stick it up here one more time. Life's most difficult question has to be this. Why is it happening to me? Now, somebody's going to say, well, what do you mean? That that can't be the most difficult question in, in the world. I really believe it is because we come to this spot in our lives that we're going to always ask, why is it happening to me? How many of you feel like that? that it's Monday all week long sometimes? Any of you? Been there and done that. You understand what I'm saying? And you'll sit back and you'll say, can one more thing happen? And it does. And guess what? Your next term is, why is it happening to me? I really believe this. This is probably the most difficult question in life. And then comes the most difficult answer in life. And I like this one too. This too shall pass. How many of you have had somebody tell you, don't worry, It'll get by. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. I'll mention that again in a few minutes. But I really wonder sometimes if this is not a difficult answer. Because I really wonder sometimes how long is it going to take it to pass? How long is it going to take it to get over with? Well, we've all been there. You know, this stuff, and we got folks that are well-wishers, and they come, they'll put their arm around our shoulder and say, Honey, it's going to be all right. And I want them to tell me, for crying out loud, when's it going to be all right? Yeah. But they're meaning well. We go to the Word of God, and God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And you know what we say? Then where in the world are you? Let's be honest. How many of you have ever asked God, where are you? I have. It's been tough sometimes in life. And I've wondered, why has this happened to me? And somebody tells me, this too shall pass. And then I remember that God said, I'll not leave you nor forsake you. I'll always be with you. And I ask him, God, where in the world are you? And when is it all going to be over with? Boy, we come to these things and, and we experience these all the time. Church families experience these difficult times. Individuals within the church experience the difficult time. And, you know, we can, we can name all these things that happen to us. There's sickness, there's financial problems, kids' problems, spouse problems, job problems. Man, it just goes down the line. And sometimes we wonder, is it ever going to stop? Will it ever stop? We come back to this old thing, it, it's going to pass. I heard somebody tell me one time, It's going to get better. I thought, you'd lie to me about something else too. No, this is tough stuff in life. But the Bible, the Bible is really explicit in some of the things that it says. Now, I really enjoy what Paul wrote, and and, and it's tough to, because Paul says, I pleaded the Lord three times to take this away from me, and God said, my grace is sufficient, whatever you're going to find. And, And I believe that Paul believed that because of what he said. 
But then I have to look further into the scripture at some of the other things that are pointed out to us. And one of the things you might understand about this is difficulties come to test your faith. I really believe that. Now here's what James says about it in James the first chapter in verses 2, and two 3, and 4. James makes this comment. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, are you ready for a good laugh? Look at the next line. Consider it an opportunity for great joy. I thought some of you could chuckle at that. James had a sense of humor, evidently. But notice that. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your faith has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your excuse me, so when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. I really like what James said because it sets the tone for all of life. He simply said, difficulties will come your way. Get used to it. Life's not always going to run smooth. I go back and you look at the very first book of the, the blessed book, in the book of Genesis, these first two people that God made. Do you understand that they had difficulties in their lives? Just as they got started, here comes this serpent Here comes this old deceiver. How many of you have ever been deceived by a friend? Yeah. See, here he comes, and he's looking real good. Sometimes our deceivers look extremely good to us. And here comes Satan, and he gets with Adam and Eve, and he starts with with Eve, but you've got to be serious about this thing. He's after both of them. He is. And he comes and he uses this thing that happens to all of us. At one time or another, we're deceived. I really like these commercials on television. For $19.95, if you'll order it today, we're going to send you one of these. But if you'll hurry right now, we'll send you two of them. Just pay separate shipping and postage. You get both of them. Guess what? Neither one of them work. We've been deceived, but we bought into it. See, this is an all of life. We've all been at that spot in life when somebody told us, listen, you won't get caught. And we did. I've been there. See, when I'm here, I've been where you are. And we're all going to go through some of the same things. We've been deceived. Satan uses that deceptive lie to trick all of us. Some folks even in, in, in society today have this idea because I talked to a guy the other day and he said, listen, preacher, you don't have to go to church to serve the Lord. I said, no, you don't, but it helps you if you will. It does. Now, you, can, you can worship God with the, the television. You just got one problem. You can't really get your offering in on time. But we got folks who say, I can worship the Lord at home. I don't have to be with everybody else. But you know, there's something about being together. And that's what Satan does. Satan deceives us. He says, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to get together. You don't have to sing and praise. But when we do, we go away feeling better. Do you know it? It's able to face life's difficulties. Well, there's another thought about him. And, and, and when you think about this, you think about death and some other things. But Abraham faced some difficulties. Difficulties came his way because here's what James said, brothers and sisters, when troubles come your way. Now, some of you may not think about this as being a trouble thing for Abraham, but you'll remember that Abraham asked God for a son. Y'all remember that? He really did because Abraham was crying out to God one time and said, listen, I don't have anybody to leave all this stuff to. And God told him, said, you're going to have a son. Abraham, like the rest of us, he said, okay, but when? God said, when I get ready. When I get ready, not you, when I. Abraham waited, 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 and finally, as he got real old, guess what he did? He had that son that God had promised to him by the wife that he loved so much. Not the one by the handmaid, but by the wife that God gave him. It wasn't very long after that. You know what God had the nerve to do? God had the nerve to say, hey, Abraham. Abraham says, yes, Lord. Abraham, take your son. We're going to go up on top of the mountain. And guess what you're going to do, Abraham? What, God? You're going to give your only son back to me. You're going to sacrifice him. Whew! How many times 
has God asked you to give up something that you'd wanted for a long time? How many times has God asked you to get rid of those things that, that we want to hold on to so tightly that we think that are so important? Yeah, y'all, it's tough to get rid of some of the stuff that we think is so important. But I want you to understand this. In the midst of all that difficulty, Abraham trudged forward to do what God wanted him to do. It says to us, sometimes we've got to go forward trusting God. Well, there's a couple other things, and, and in my notes, I, I did it this way. I put down, ex- David experienced difficulties. In out my notes, I put too many to talk about. You ever think about David? I mean, he says, shepherd boy out there, and yeah, he faced the bear and the lion. I want you to understand real quick, I don't want to, but he did, he had to, he was out there. You'll remember that he came along and Saul, Saul wanted to kill him. Then he had that problem with the girl that he saw taking the bath that time. And then there was a the time that he did a few other things that God didn't want him to do. And everything that he did seemingly led to a problem. How many times in our lives have the things that we've done, knowing we shouldn't have done them, just led to greater problems? Hey, let's be fair, it does. You know, there are consequences to our sin, aren't they? And sometimes our sin really tests our faith because we can say, well, Lord, forgive me of that. You know what we'll do? We'll go out and do it again. And the same things happen. Well, according to the Scripture... Difficulties will come your way because this is what James said. Dear brothers and sisters, love the way he did that. When troubles come your way, then here's that laughing line I told you to look at. His next line, he simply said, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Any of you ever have a flat on the interstate with the trucks going by real fast? and there ain't enough room to get off the side, I just get so joyful at that. (laughs) I know this would happen to none of y'all. I've got a real good vehicle, and it's got a real nice gas gauge. When you get down to a certain spot, the bell rings. You go a little bit farther, the light comes on. You go a little bit farther, and it quits running. Consider it all joy when you're stupid. (laughs) Yeah. You're saying, what in the world? See, all these things happen to us in life and we're really wondering how in the world can we find joy in some of the things that are happening to us in life because this guy simply says, consider it a joy. Then I have to go back and look at what Paul said. Back in that 8th verse, or the ninth verse, if you will, Paul said this in the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians. He said, therefore, I will boast all the more about my weaknesses. He said, I'm going to boast about the problems that I have. You know, sometimes, y'all, if we look at the problems we have, that these are ways and these are opportunities that we can glorify and praise God that he got us through them. I want you to understand this. God will never take you to anything that if you're a believer, he won't take you through. But so much of the time, we get to the wall and we say, this is as far as I can go. And guess what? That is as far as we can go. But he can go farther. Consider it an opportunity to walk with God where God wants to take us. My problems test my faith. And if I don't believe that God can, I want you to understand this. He won't. Now that's tough, isn't it? If I won't believe that He can, be assured that He why is He obligated to? Why? I'm not believing Him, but listen. When the trials, the problems, the persecutions, whatever they are, come my way, if I'll trust God, if I'll believe Him, if I'll hang with Him, guess what? According to the promise that He made, He will not fail me. He'll be there. That's what we're looking for. As our faith grows, and that's the thing, as our faith grows, our difficulties will become smaller. Did you notice what James said there? He said, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect, complete, needing nothing. We'll get to the point that we can handle it. 
because we're letting him take care of it. See, the more we give to God, the less we have to take care of. Isn't that nice? Because he will take care of it. Well, we think about these things, we keep on going. Difficulties will make a true believer a little bit stronger. That's a tough one for us too. Did you know that? Difficulties are going to make me a little bit stronger. Yeah, I think they will. Let's look at that bottom one first. I was trying something with that PowerPoint, and, and it said do it in reverse. I've reversed it twice and still can't get it right. But anyway, that's part of it. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> I, I, I told Annette when I gave it to her, I said, "Hun, go in there and tweak that thing because I know it's not right. And, and I, she said, I'm going to touch the thing. <laughs> that's it. Anyway, let's do this. It's going to be fun. Difficulty is going to make you stronger. Job 23.10, Job said this. And this is Job talking. If you go to the 23rd chapter, it starts up right at the top. It says, and Job said, and Job had a whole list of the stuff that he said. But his, I love this one. He made this statement, the 10th verse. But he knows, and he's talking about God. He says, but he knows where I'm going. And when he tests me, I will come through pure as gold. I like that had a friend, and he is a pastor, and I didn't call him, didn't ask. He sent me a thing on Facebook, and he made this comment, and, and I do not reveal who he is, and, and probably you wouldn't know him, but bless his heart, evidently it's been tough. But he made this comment. He said, the last six months have been like going through hell. You know what he's saying? He said, I've been in the fire. But I liked what he said afterwards. He said, but I believe. He said, I believe my God will get me through it and I'm going to trust him. Y'all, there's the problem in us. We're not like Job. We're not like this guy. We come to our problem. We say, it's all broken out. I'm in the fire and all I want's out. You know, sometimes we jump out of the skillet into the fire. Frying pan, however you say that one. But here it is. Job said it. He said, God knows what I'm going through. God knows whatever your trial is today. I don't. Brother John doesn't always know. Sometimes we keep things bottled up so far in us that if we don't let it out one of these days, guess what? We're going to explode. Bless his heart. Old Job said it. He said, but he knows what I'm going through. But when he tests me, he's going to make me come out pure. You've all heard the stories about gold and how it's refined, the silver, how it's refined. It's done by the fire. It's done by the heat. And y'all, we're in the heat sometimes of life. But it comes back to this. In that heat, there is an opportunity. In that heat, there's an opportunity to trust God and believe God what God can do for us. Well, something else is said. This is how Job handled it, and it's in that 14th, 13th and 14th verse. The problems came his way, and he said, this is going to make me stronger because I'm going to come out pure, I'm going to come out refined, we're going to come out with the best things that I'll ever have. But here's what he said. Now, there's some other things between the 10th verse and the, the 13th verse, that, that, that whole passage there that I like. But here's one of the things he said. But once he has made his decision. That's God. Who can change his mind? Whatever he wants to do, what he does. He does. So he will do to me whatever he has planned. He controls my destiny. Y'all, let's get serious about this for a little while. Why is this happening to me, we can ask. You've got to understand this. Times God allows these things to happen to us so that we'll learn that he's in control. When I was growing up, I learned real quick that I didn't always question my dad when he said something. Wasn't always as smart as I am now. Because one time he told me something and I used the same three-letter word that all of y'all have used at one time or another. I said, why? Y'all ever do that? Yeah. 
And his comment was, because I, <laughs> you've been told that too, hadn't you, brother? <laughs> because I said so. Wow. Now, I think about God like that. I'm saying to God, why are you letting all this stuff happen to me? Why in the world is it so difficult? How come? How long? All these things. And then I come back and I see what Job said. And Job said, when God says he's going to do something, it's up to him and I'm going to trust him. Woo! That's tough stuff, y'all. How is it that I can trust God when I don't know where he's going to take me? Be assured of this. In that 23rd chapter, Job didn't know what was going to happen later on. Do you all know that? Because his friends keep on telling him, it ain't worth it. Why don't you give up? You've messed up real bad in life. Guess what, y'all? It doesn't matter how bad you've messed up in life. It doesn't matter how far down the pit you feel like you are. My God and your God can lift us up out of the miry clay and he can set our feet on a solid rock. And he can take care of us because as that last line says, he will do whatever he has planned. He controls my destiny. I like that. That God's going to take care of it. He's going to say, so he already knows what's going to happen to me? Yeah, he does. But guess how much he loves us? He lets us get into some trouble on our own every once in a while. Y'all know that? He really does. He lets us do our own thing occasionally. And sometimes our own thing leads to greater problems. And the greater problems will sometimes test our faith. But the more our faith is tested and the more we believe in God, the stronger we will become for what God's preparing for us next. You may be in the fire right now. But God's making you pure for the plans that he has for you. And his plans simply say, don't give up. Hang in there. Well, what else would he say about this? Now, got to go back to Paul on this, this, this line here. This is what God thinks about our difficulties. Now, I hope you think that God is always sympathetic I don't think he is how many of you have ever heard this thing you made your bed y'all heard that huh yeah God sometimes says that to us do you know that but he's loving when he says it he's merciful when he says it and guess what he also says I'll help you get through it he'll even help us get out of it So this is what God thinks about our difficulties. Look at 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 9. But he said to me, this is Paul speaking, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In our weakness, in the frailties that we have in life, we see the strength of God. Did you know it? That's what he's saying. He's saying, sometimes you get to where you are, and I'll let you get there so that you can see how I can bring you out. It's not always about what we can do. Y'all, there's been some messes I've got myself into that I tried to take care of myself, and you know what's happened? The mess just got bigger. But if I could learn that wherever I am, that I could give it to him, that his grace is sufficient, then I understand that he'll take over and he'll lead me through. It may be tough, but he's going to bring me to a better side. All I got to do is learn to hang with him. God, as we face these things, is perfecting us for something bigger and something better. Now, when Paul complained about the three things that three times to the Lord about the problem that he had, God didn't say, I'm going to take it away from you. He said, I'm going to help you with it. You see, sometimes what we want God to do is just get rid of it. And sometimes God simply says, I'm going to let you keep it so you'll become stronger and you'll be ready for the next step that I have for you in life. Hang in there. I'm going to say this about poor old Paul. It would have been very easy at that particular time for him to have said, God, it ain't worth it. 
And I want y'all to know I can confess that one time I told God, it ain't worth it. But he told me it was. He said it was. And you got to hang in there because he said, my grace is sufficient. It doesn't matter what you think, Tom. I'll be with you. Don't you know, it wasn't easy coming out. But I want to thank God and praise God. He brought me through. And he'll bring you through if you'll hang in there with him. So, God's perfecting us. God's making us stronger. You know why? Because you go back to James, and James made this comment. He said, when the troubles come your way, you may get through one, but guess what? There will be another on the way. Get ready for it. Guess what God's doing? He's preparing you for the next phase, the next step. You're going on. Hang in there. He makes us stronger. The more we trust him, the more we believe him, the more he brings us to that place that he has for us. Doesn't matter what you face. Our God is sufficient. I believe that with all my heart. Doesn't matter what it is. You can be told that you've been diagnosed with cancer. Guess what? His grace is sufficient. I lost my dad to cancer. I lost my mother to cancer. But I want you to know God told me his grace is sufficient. You know, we've all been where somebody else has been. And we've all learned that his grace is sufficient. Now, does that mean that everything's going to always work just the way that I want it to? It's not what he said. He said, my grace is sufficient. I'll be with you today. I'll be with you tomorrow. And I, he said, and Job talked about it, don't know how bad tomorrow is going to be, but I'm going to believe this, that my God's going to be with me the next day and the next day and the next day. Well, count it all joy when problems come your way because our God can handle them for you. Probably the big question that faces us in life is this. What are we going to do? Let me give you a quick, simple answer to what are we going to do. It's today. And today is a decision day. You're going to walk out these doors, every one of us, and we're going to make up our mind. We're going to say, I can or we're going to walk out those doors and say, oh, I don't know if I can believe everything that preacher said or not. Has absolutely nothing to do with what I've said. But I want you to know that based upon the authority of God's word, his word, today is the day. This is the day that you can give it all to him. Whoa, I got to give it all to him? Yeah. You've got to give him all your doubts, all your fears, all your frustrations, all your hang-ups, all your aggravations, all the things that it seems like the world's crashing. Give him all the lies that Satan's ever told you and come and say, God, I'm going to give it all to you today because the fires of difficulty that are burning around you today are purifying you for what God has in store for you. So where do I start? Where do I start? My friend, we start this way. You can't do anything until we get rid of self. And the only way that we can get rid of self is to come to an altar of prayer and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. I've torn up everything. But today, God, I want to come to you and I want to confess all these things. You know the reason sometimes we got stuff that just keeps on and keeps on and keeps on? And even as believers, sometimes, y'all, we got hidden sin down in us that we think nobody knows about, but my friend, my God knows about it. And sometimes we've just got to come and say, God, here it is, today's the day. I'm going to confess and I'm going to believe you and I'm going to accept you and I'm going to do what you want done. You begin by accepting Christ as your personal Savior. That's the first step. Well, preacher, I'm a member of the church, so what? 
There's lots of folks got their names on church roads going to split hell wide open. They'll miss heaven by a million miles. You know why? Because they believe some lie that somebody said, well, if you go to church and join church, everything will be all right. It's not. It's when we give it to Jesus, when we give it to him and allow him to take over. We simply do it by confessing our sin, believing that he died on the cross for us, that we could be saved. The Bible says there is no other name given among men whereby we must what? Be saved. It's Jesus. So it starts with him. If we've accepted him, you know if you've asked him to come in your heart, you know that you've been saved, but yet there's some stuff, some stuff that you've let creep in, some stuff that's kind of keeping you from what God wants for you. Maybe today's the day to come and confess. Not me, not to anybody else. Come and say, hey, God, I need some help. I need some relief. And you know what you'll hear? God will say, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. What are you going to do? Today's the day. It's your choice, your opportunity. We're going to go out that door in a few minutes. You can go out that door different if you want to. Let's stand and bow our hearts for just a moment. Father, we're about to sing an invitation to him. You know the hearts and the lives of every person that's here. You know every need of every individual. And God, I pray today by the power of the Holy Spirit that God, you'll speak to hearts. God, there's folks here that are hurting. They got those difficulties and it seems like life's crashing in. Then God, I pray that you'll move and God, you'll have your way. Father, if there's a a man, a woman, a boy, a girl that's here this morning that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, then God, I pray that they come. God, let us tell them about Jesus and how he can save them. God, it's your time. You move. We'll praise you in Jesus' name. Oh,